All right, family, so I want to deal with this video. And it's high time it's going to knock this out. Let's check this out real quick. See what this dude got to say. How old is your mom? Right. My mom is uh, 56. What if I told you that they were trying to raise the retirement age on your mother? You'd be frustrated about it. Oh, yeah, that. for sure, for sure. That's, that's one of the things that's on the line. Trying to raise the retirement age, Social Security. You have, you have any sisters? Yes. All right. Retirement age and also retirement. Anybody who's listening to Jason Black knows that uh, retirement was actually not meant for everyday citizens because to effectively retire, you have to start early, early. You have to start like in your 20s, really like 18, 19 years of age with a large sum of money put into the 401k so you can be able to retire when you turn 65, 70, whatever. Problem. Most of us don't know that. Most of us don't have that type of money. White folk included. Um, most of us are not gonna put in that much money because we don't make that much money personally. All right. So this, this, you know, this is some BS they throwing out there. Black folk are disenfranchised. We are intentionally marginalized, so we can't get to those types of money. If you look at the grants. All the grants are supposed to be for minorities are pending. They have a hold on. They're like, oh, hey, this is a future grant from like 2020, 2021. Never came to fruition. But if you look at the other groups, Argentinians, uh, Philippines and stuff like that, they have grants dedicated for them. And I haven't looked at any other groups. I just, you know, I put minority, try to find anything that could be for us. And... <laughs> Sorry about the black family. I was just kicking my butt early this morning. However, you know, those grants we don't get. And if you do have those grants, we're the last to be looked at. So, yeah, that that's, I feel like you're doing the most with that statement. I feel like you're doing the most with that statement. Let's keep going. Well, brother, they have kids? Yes. Look at them entitlement programs, child care. We come from that. Those food stamps helped us out. So on the other side talking about, we want to cut that, we want to raise the retirement, my mom is 56. My mom walks with a limp right now. She can't work another 20 years. So this whole food stamp thing, the current administration, as we've seen, are giving these illegals, people who have not made one dollar that was taxed and put back into the American economy, upwards of 20 grand. They get 15,000 in food stamps, 5,000 in cash benefits monthly. You know what we can do with that? Half of that. Black folk need a third. You give us a third, oh, bro. The family eating good, business getting handled, bills staying paid up, and we're going to put back in the economy because we're going to get some nice. Okay, cool. I got everything's handled. It's been five, six months. I'm going to put some money back. Let me go give me a little something. We're going to spend a, a major purchase and put back into the economy. These folks are sending money back home to their failed homelands for the rest of the family so they can come over here and flood the zone. So, ah, I, I don't want to hear that. And then also the whole, my mama's 56, that most of us are not going to be retired. Let's just, the long and short of, because we have been disenfranchised so much and because we've had to keep searching for the answers, here's the thing I've noticed. So if you look at the tech sector, of the, uh, the, so if you look at the tech sector, you'll notice that at one time they were like, hey, you don't need a degree to be in tech. Get certificates. All right, so everybody's rushing, you know, white folk, black folk, Hispanics, Indians, or I should say Asians, Kamala's cousins and them. Everybody's running to get certifications. But then you see some of these people in tech saying, well, I got my degree. And that's how I got on. So it seems like every time we we move into a space and say, hey, this is what we're looking for, it's like they move the goalposts. Either direction. Okay, all y'all coming over here, well, we, well, we want degrees. Okay, well, I'll get the degree. You're, well, we, I really need a certificate. I got certificates, but then you said it was a degree. Now you says, so it's, it's constant back and forth that moves goalposts. It makes it hard for us to get into these spaces where we can make the good money. Because tech, tech people make good money. Really good money. You know they don't want black folk having that type of money. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to build something. We're going to build something quickly. It's going to be efficient. It's going to be better than anything in, it, in anybody in the dominant society could build. But they don't want that. So this idea that, um, you know, she's older, 
Well, guess what? Here's, here's the unfortunate part. A lot of our parents bought into the hype, bought into what they said. You work a really good job. You keep bills paid up, keep good credit. And you'll be able to retire. The whole inflation thing was never factored into it. I know people right now who retired some 20 years ago. They're older, much older. And they're struggling now because of inflation, because of cost of living going up. So unless you think of these things ahead of time and put yourself in a really good position, you're not technically going to be retired. And if you do retire, you honestly need to have some type of vehicle that is semi-automated to automated where it's making money for you and it's growing with the economy or has the potential to grow with the economy because if you don't, you go that inflation is, is going to catch up to you and you're going to be back working. You That's why you see so many people at Walmart that are older. They, they more than likely retired and they can't retire no more. I got to go back to work. You know how many white folk we see? If you know, if you really pay attention, you'll see a lot more older white folk, particularly white women I noticed, that are back working. Because they have no choice. The economy is so bad. Their dollar ain't stretching like it used to. They retired in the 90s, early 2000s. And now they got to go back to work. So, brother, you you trying to pull on people's heartstrings using their moms and stuff like that. And I don't appreciate that. I take myself out the equation. And my grandmother smiled and said, my own prescription drugs is at the lowest they ever been. I just, but she smiled. I may not ever have that moment again, but seeing that and hearing that from your grandmother, I said, I know what I'm voting for. My grandma never st stared me wrong in my life. All right, so this last part where her prescription drugs are the lowest they've ever been. Nobody's gonna have perfect health, but my thing is, and you see, I'm a big dude. I, I, I'll admit, I'm 290, I should not be. I'm only five, nine and a half. If I was like seven foot, it didn't make, it didn't make sense then. Most of us, unfortunately, are inundated with a lot of stress, especially if you notice black men, the ones who are highly stressed out, they stomachs are big as hell. You look at the shoulders, you look at the chest area, you look at the, the legs, they not big all over. It's not really just fat like that. It's high cortisol levels from stress. They just highly stressed out, which high stress, overweight, it usually comes with diabetes, high blood pressure, your heart's weakened, over time, because it's strain on your body, pancreas, liver, all these other things, especially. And then, the you know, higher levels of depression. So you start drinking more, you're smoking more. Then you got to eat something to put on your belly. So now you're overeating. All this is a combination of bad life practices and dealing with the dominant society. Dealing with, I'm not making enough money. Uh, dang, I got to pay these bills. How do I triple my income? How do I double my income? I'm 40, and the things I should have known or should have been taught when I was 15 to 20, I'm learning between 35 and 40. Now there's a sense of urgency. I got to catch up. I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out fast. I got I to get times down on my side. Most of us feel like we're like right here with the water. The water of life is right here. And every now and again, it goes up, and we, <laughs> we try to get up over it. You know, when we was kids, we didn't think about what the water level of life was. It wasn't. Somebody else was footing the bill. But now you're adults. It's right here. It just seems like it just keeps... The waves just go right over your nose, and you're, like, drowning. We're trying to be successful. Trying to put your children in good positions. Trying to make something of yourself. Trying to keep all the bills paid. Double the income. Be a father. Be a husband. Be a good, uh, be a good baby daddy or whatever. And I'm not, and sisters, I'm not discounting you, but I'm not a woman. I can't speak for women like that. Never been a woman, don't want to be. Y'all do an excellent job. Y'all can have that. But you're dealing with all these things. So that's stress from that. You're dealing with the dominant society, see the things they, they're doing. Stress from that. Your woman looks for you to lead. Your children look for you to provide. All this is going on is just a culmination, a ball of un mitigated unwavering stress that you have to manage as a man and you've learned all this stuff later in life so now you're trying to figure out how to get your children in a position so they don't have to do like you did or struggle the way you did and it's it's a lot sometimes it feels like it's insurmountable 
as Jason say, look it up. That's the long and short of it. So them putting out this little piece, I don't appreciate it. I think it's uh, uncalled for, and it's super vague, and they're pulling on people's heartstrings. You know, the mother, your mother, think about your mom, your mother, your mom. Well, mom's part of the past, unfortunately. You're the present. Your children, your nieces, your nephews, etc. cetera, your, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, great nieces, great nephews, those that's the future. What do you think about them? You think about the past, the people who are have less days in front of them than they do behind them. You know, think about the ones that got more days, years, months, weeks, and stuff ahead of them. You know, I think about them. You're not preparing for them. I think we should have respect for our elders, but we should also move in a way where we understand that they're not going to live forever. Just like we're not going to live forever. So let's build for the future and prepare the next generation so it's not a cyclical thing where everybody's just constantly struggling. That's all I got to say. Be one.